Today is Tuesday, February 8th. From California to Connecticut, state leaders are loosening some COVID-19 restrictions. We'll explain. And which country's top official gave a show of support at the White House and may cut off a major project with Russia. Plus, some Olympic athletes are complaining about their living conditions at the Beijing Games. A new merger could create one giant low-cost airline. And an American home is being sold as an NFT for the very first time. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. This could be a sign we're entering a new phase in the pandemic. The governors of four states announced plans to lift statewide mask mandates in schools. These decisions were in Connecticut, Delaware, New Jersey, and Oregon. They all plan to lift the mask requirements a month or two from now. A couple of the governors spoke about how people are just going to have to live with COVID-19 since they don't think it'll ever totally go away. These four states were already among only a dozen who did have mask mandates in schools. In fact, eight states, like Florida and Texas, actually have bans on school mask mandates. And it's been an issue heavily fought in courts around the country. Still, the Biden administration is recommending universal mask wearing in schools. Other COVID-19 restrictions are getting lifted as well as case counts start going down. For example, California will end its indoor mask mandates for vaccinated people next week. But that does not extend to schools. And New York's governor says she will be reevaluating mask mandates soon. Well, sadly, another American grocery store became the scene of a deadly shooting this week, and the gunman is still on the run. The shooting happened inside a Fred Meyer supermarket in the town of Richland, Washington. Two employees were shot. One of them died. The other is critically hurt in the hospital. So far, police have not said what might have motivated the shooter or whether he knew the people he shot. But investigators posted his photo online and told anyone who sees him to call 911. He's still thought to be armed and dangerous. The U.S. and Germany promised to keep up what President Biden called a reliable partnership. Germany's new chancellor visited the White House for the first time this week. And after their talks, both Chancellor Olaf Scholz and President Biden made it clear they're on the same page, even when it comes to the situation with Russia and Ukraine. Germany has pretty high stakes in this fight, especially since it relies heavily on natural gas from Russia. The German government has been criticized for letting the Russia to Germany gas pipeline keep going, even though Ukraine calls it an existential threat to its security. That pipeline is called the Nord Stream 2. Well, now after meeting with Germany's leader, President Biden said there will no longer be a Nord Stream 2 if Russia does invade Ukraine. But he said the U.S. and other countries will be able to make up a significant portion of the supplies lost, so Europeans will not have to go without. At the same time the leaders of the U.S. and Germany were meeting, the presidents of France and Russia did the same. France's president called the talks substantial and deep. As always, Russian President Putin denied any plans of invading Ukraine. But Russia has been adding military might to the Ukrainian border almost daily. And the U.S. and its allies say Russia could attack Ukraine any day now. Putin also warned of an even bigger war if Ukraine joins NATO— but again, that he's open to negotiations. France's president plans to visit Ukraine today, then we'll check back in with Russia to see if they can reach any kind of compromise. To be continued. A top White House science advisor is stepping down and apologizing for how he treated his staff. Following an investigation, Dr. Eric Lander acknowledged he demeaned and disrespected his colleagues. He explained a bit, saying he was trying to push himself and his coworkers toward their goals by challenging and at times criticizing people. But he also admitted he crossed the line. A lawyer who worked for Dr. Lander at the White House told Politico his apology, quote, did not come close to addressing the full extent of his egregious behavior. She said he was abusive and bullied people to tears. Dr. Lander is a prominent biologist who had bipartisan support in the Senate confirmation process. But some of his former colleagues say his reputation as a bully has been well known in the scientific community for years now. This is the first cabinet-level resignation of the Biden presidency. First Lady Jill Biden is putting her very first legislative initiative to bed, at least for now. She's been leading an effort to provide two years of free community college to all eligible American students. That measure was tucked inside a massive social spending package that struggled to win enough support in the Senate. So this week, the First Lady told a group of community college leaders the free tuition plan was not in that package at all anymore. It's pretty rare for a first lady to weigh in on bills like this, but in this case, it's fitting since Dr. Biden is a professor at a community college in Virginia, and she's been visiting community colleges over the past year. 
For now, the big social spending bill that's pending in the Senate still has a lot of other initiatives in there, like universal pre-K for three- and four-year-olds, low-cost housing aid, expanded Medicaid coverage, and more. Democrats still plan to pay for those changes by raising taxes on people who make more than $10 million a year. But Republicans say this package puts too much government into people's lives. And some moderate Democrats also say it's too expensive. So none of it will become law unless they can come up with a compromise. Stay tuned. More news coming up, but first, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor, KiwiCo. It's surreal to me that my baby will be turning one this summer, and I'm so excited to see how he continues to grow and develop. And I love that KiwiCo grows with him, sending us exactly what's right for his age. Yep, KiwiCo's subscription lines are for kids of all ages, ranging from infants and preschoolers all the way to teens. Grownups are welcome to join in on the fun, too. I also appreciate that KiwiCo is a super easy way for me to do something new and fun with my son without any extra work. Plus, it makes a great gift. I sent a subscription to my niece and she loved it, especially a neat mirror illusions project that came with it. She thought it was really cool and interesting and didn't even realize how educational it was. And she gets excited every time a new KiwiCo box arrives. You'll be surprised at how high quality these materials are as well. These are real engineering, science, and art projects for children. Redefine learning with play. Explore hands-on projects that build creative confidence and problem-solving skills with KiwiCo. Get 50% off your first month plus free shipping on any crate line with the code NEWSWORTHY at KiwiCo.com. That's 50% off your first month at K-I-W-I-C-O.com with the promo code NEWSWORTHY. Two of the country's largest budget airlines could soon become one massive discount airline. But the mega merger is already raising some eyebrows. Frontier is buying its rival, Spirit Airlines, in a $2.9 billion cash and stock deal. Both airlines have made a name for themselves with cheap fares alongside extra fees like charging for carry-on bags, seat selection, and soft drinks. The two airlines said they'll be able to grow faster together and therefore benefit passengers, bringing more low-cost fares and service to more underserved routes. And they say they need to merge to compete with their even bigger rivals. The Frontier Spirit combo would create the fifth largest U.S. airline. But we'll see if antitrust regulators agree it's a good idea. The deal will have to get their stamp of approval before it's finalized, and that's definitely not a guarantee. For now, at least, until it's a done deal, nothing changes for Spirit and Frontier passengers. But if regulators do give the okay, the deal could close later this year. Today, in what's believed to be a first-of-its-kind transaction in the U.S., a home will be auctioned off as an NFT. It's a four-bedroom, 2,000-square-foot house in Gulfport, Florida, and the bids will start at $650,000. So how will this type of deal even work when NFTs are all about allowing ownership of digital assets? One expert told the AP it's basically like selling a company, and that company owns the home. The current owner told the Tampa Bay Times turning property rights into NFTs will make selling a home as fast and easy as a Venmo transaction. The company behind the sale also said it's a chance to treat real estate like a collectible, especially in high-demand places. But just like with other investments, experts say, proceed with caution. It's not clear if the value of the house tied to an NFT would be affected by the crypto market, and there's not a lot of historical data to fall back on. After a lot of blowback, the IRS says it no longer wants your selfie this tax season. Originally, the agency said it would use a third-party service that uses facial recognition to prove that you are you, and that would let you use the IRS's online tools. To verify your identity, the IRS said you would have to give a photo of an identity document, like a passport or driver's license, and that's not all. After that, the taxpayer would have to upload a selfie with their iPhone or webcam. Once the IRS verified who they were, only then could they use IRS self-help tools like the Child Tax Credit Update Portal. But many taxpayers and some politicians did not like the idea of sending the IRS a picture because of privacy issues. Plus, some tax professionals point out that older people or lower-income people may not have access to phones or computers to take the pictures and get online. So the IRS dropped the idea and promised to quickly come up with another way to authenticate without using facial recognition. Well, this may not be the Olympics experience athletes were expecting. Many Olympians are criticizing the food, what they call confusing COVID-19 testing, and the conditions in quarantine hotels in China. For example, a Polish athlete who tested positive for COVID-19 called the whole thing a traumatic experience. She described being ruled in and out of the game several times because of conflicting COVID-19 test results, saying at no point did she know what was going on with her status. 
And a Russian athlete talked about her mental health, saying she cries every day. She posted a photo of one of her meals on Instagram stories that she said was inedible. Other teams have started going public, too. Like the head of the German delegation is calling for better rooms, better meals, and equipment so the athletes are still in good shape for when they get out of isolation. Organizers say several hundred athletes and games participants have tested positive since arriving in China. As for Team USA, one of the men's figure skaters will not compete today because he tested positive for COVID-19. And three of USA's women bobsledders tested positive so far, but they've got some time before their competition starts on February 13th. As for the medals, American ski racer Ryan Cochran Siegel secured Team USA's fourth silver medal. USA still has zero gold and is currently ranking number 15 so far. But there's still a lot of Olympics to go. The Beijing Winter Games don't wrap up until February 20th. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Trivia Tuesday, when we ask a different trivia question every week. But first, thanks to our sponsor. I was recently talking to a friend about something she was going through, and she felt like it wasn't big enough of an issue to go to therapy. But here's the thing. You do not have to wait until something feels unbearable to get some help. In fact, therapy can help you deal with something before things get worse. I think of it like taking care of my physical health. It's important to be proactive. And with BetterHelp, you don't even need to change out of your pajamas because you can talk to a licensed professional counselor from the comfort of your own home. Whether you're texting, talking on the phone, or connecting on a video call, it's secure and confidential. BetterHelp has counselors who are specialized in stress, anxiety, grief, relationships, and much more. And if you're ever not happy with yours, just change counselors anytime until you find the right fit. It's even more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, betterhelp.com slash newsworthy. Okay, now back to Trivia Tuesday. Today's trivia question is, which NFL team has the most Super Bowl appearances? You can answer the question and play along on Instagram. Just find and follow us at newsworthypod and look for the trivia quiz in our Instagram stories today. As for last week's trivia question... Who was the first president to officially recognize Black History Month? The answer is Gerald Ford. That means the very first Black History Month was observed in 1976. Ford called on the public to seize the opportunity to honor the all-too-often neglected accomplishments of Black Americans throughout our history. But Ford wasn't the first person who ever thought to dedicate part of the year for this purpose. The story of Black History Month is said to have started in 1915, half a century after the 13th Amendment abolished slavery. That's when the so-called father of black history, Carter G. Woodson, and a prominent minister, founded an organization to research and promote achievements by black Americans. Then in 1926, the group sponsored a Black History Week. Fifty years later, President Ford officially recognized it and made it the full month in 1976. And every year since, every American president has designated February as Black History Month. Although critics have long argued that black history should be taught and celebrated more year-round, not just during one month. All right, thank you so much for listening today and every day. We'll be back with another news roundup tomorrow. Until then, have a great day.